Hey, St. John family, welcome to another week's Children's Worship Service lesson. I hope you had a great week. I hope you were kind and helpful. I hope that you learned a lot. And I hope you remembered that ultimately Jesus is the reason for this season. Before we get started, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to study your word. We pray that this lesson teaches us to always find the joy uh, in everything that that happens in our lives, uh, because um, because you you bring us joy. Uh, we just ask that you clear any distractions, open our hearts and minds, so that we can receive this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. So, hello there. It's great to uh, see you all. <laughs> uh, we're celebrating this whole month, and what are we celebrating this whole month? That's right, Christmas. Um, but we remember that Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. We talked last week about uh, the hope that we can have because God kept his promise uh, to send Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, during this time of the year, I have I just have so much joy because I think about what Christmas Day is going to be like. And, you know, I get I just get joyful thinking about spending that day with family. They bring me joy. And see, joy isn't always something, you know, that we feel, but it is something that we can choose. You know, it's amazing how much our attitude just, it can change things within us. And no matter, you know, what this week has been like, um, I want you today to put joy on display. I want you today to put joy on display. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm saying right now, in this moment, I want you to choose joy. Okay? No matter what the week's been like, choose joy. It's going to be a, a game changer in your life if you choose joy. Because this week ahead will look very different. You see, Jesus was born for us, and that's an amazing gift. So, let's sing, but not just sing, but let's sing with joy in our hearts.
Did you know that the angels sing praises to God? I mean, that's that's pretty cool when you think about it. You know, in the Christmas story we read in Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 13 and 14, uh, that suddenly a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Now, even though we may not all sing like angels, we can still give God praise like the angels do. So let's be like the angels today and uh, and give God praise as we learn about uh, this lesson. I really enjoyed listening to the way this narrator told the story of the birth of Jesus. And you know what? I think you will too. Check it out. Joy to the world. Since the very beginning when people chose to turn from God, the world has been a dark place. Things fall apart, people face pain, brokenness, and difficult times. God knew how desperately all of mankind needed hope, rescue. He knew that the world needed a reason to choose joy. So, God planned an incredible gift. Now, you and I know that something like that can't be put inside a box, but maybe this will help us think about the story. I love to tell it again and again to every generation. He had whispered about it to prophets and poets over hundreds of years, but the very first person to discover that God's gift to the world was just about to be delivered was a girl named Mary. Mary was an ordinary teenager living in the ordinary town of Nazareth in the middle of nowhere special. And yet, God chose her. He sent an angel with an incredible message. Mary, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. serve the Lord. May it happen to me just the way you said it would. God's son, this ordinary girl would become the mom of God's son. Joy, fear, and confusion hit her all at once. But she knew this was a gift from God. But God had promised that his son, the rescuer, would be born in Bethlehem, not Nazareth. A short time before the baby was going to be born, Mary and the man she was engaged to marry, Joseph, took a road trip. By the time Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, the baby was ready to be born. But the town was full. Everyone else had come home to Bethlehem too. They probably checked with every one of Joseph's relatives, but no one had any room to spare. Every space was taken. Hey, wait. Except, it turned out there was a spot available space in Bethlehem was a room share with the animals. The king of all kings would be born in a barn. Not what you're expecting, right? It's not what anyone was expecting. It was so much more.
God had already made it clear that his gift was not just for one or two people though. That night, he sent another message. There were shepherds in the fields outside of Bethlehem, watching their sheep all night. They were sleepy, maybe a little bored when, you guessed it, an angel showed up. Don't be afraid. I have good news that will bring great joy to everybody. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born. He's the Messiah, the Lord. You will know I'm telling the truth, but you'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Those shepherds jumped right up and ran straight to Bethlehem to see God's gift. And they weren't the only ones. God sent the news of his gift far and wide. He posted a notice high up in the sky. A lot of people saw that shining new star. But one group of wise scholars knew that it meant something very special. Through study of prophecy, they knew the star told of a brand new king. These scholars lived far to the east, but they too set out on a long journey to Bethlehem, bringing gifts fit for a king. The gift that everyone was waiting for was delivered. God's gift to the world came in unexpected packaging. It came to an unexpected place. He brought together the most ragtag mix of people you could imagine. And over time, all of them stood in awe of God's amazing gift, Jesus, God's Son. Joy to the world! You see, God had a plan for Mary. Actually, he had a plan for all mankind. His plan included Mary, but Mary couldn't see the whole plan when Gabriel showed up. She was pregnant without a husband and asked to be the Savior's mom. It was a lot to take in. And it's not what, you know, she expected her life to be at, like at all. But I want you to think about one thing Mary said at the very beginning, just as Gabriel was leaving. She said, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. In other words, I know you got this, God. I'm just along for the ride, and I'll trust that you know what you're doing. God has a good plan for us all, a good plan, not a bad one. Part of that plan is for us to have a close relationship with Jesus. Real joy comes from trusting in God's plan. Even when things happen that you don't expect, you can find joy in knowing that God is with you and that he sent Jesus for you. Mary didn't ask to be Jesus' mom, but she was chosen to be his mom anyway. She thought she would have a normal life, you know, with her normal husband in a normal town. It's the same way with us sometimes, isn't it? We have a plan of our own and we, we have an idea of how things are going to go how are they going to work out? But then something happens that changes everything. And sometimes it's God's plan working itself out for us. But in any case, the bottom line is you can have joy because God has a plan for you. So before you leave, I want you to think about this question. What are your plans for Christmas? Not what things you want to unwrap on your list, but what are your plans for celebrating? What would happen if those plans were totally turned around? What would you do? Would you complain? Complain about not getting what you wanted? Or, like Mary, would you simply say, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. 
See, the choice to raise some big stink or to go with the flow is completely up to you. It's up to each and every one of you kids. So I want you to think about this as we pray today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being our Savior. We can see how Mary trusted your plan and you filled her heart with joy. Thank you for reminding us that you have a good plan for us, a good plan for our lives too. Help us to find joy in you because your plans are always good. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, like about that story, I just love how God had a plan for Mary and Elizabeth too. But the truth is, God had a plan for each and every one of us. Remember that bottom line. You can always have joy because God had a plan for you. I mean, it must have been pretty shocking for Mary when she heard the news from the angel. She never could have imagined that she would be the one to give birth to the Savior of the world. But while she didn't fully understand how everything, you know, would work out, Mary trusted God. She believed that God had a good plan for her life. We can trust God too. Remember the basic truth? We can trust Him no matter what. That's how we find joy. Real joy comes from knowing that God has a plan for you. Even when things happen that you don't expect, you can find joy in knowing God is with you. And he's working toward that good plan he has for you. God's plan to send Jesus to be Mary's son was part of his good plan for your life too. God sent Jesus to rescue you because he loves you so much. We have a great way to remember that with our memory verse for this month, Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Say it with me. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Right. We know that Jesus came to be our Savior. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's why we can have joy. So thank you so much for joining me today. Before you leave, I want you to remember this last thing. That you can always have joy when you remember that God has a plan for your life. So until I see you next time, may God bless you and may you find joy in him. Bye.